All right, so what I'm doing today is an SNES 2, SNES Mini Junior, whatever you want to call it, SPDIF mod. And basically, it's just digital audio. And uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. Toss Link, which was like the laser, the light version, and then you can just do an RCA version um, called Coax. And we're going to end up doing Coax on this one just because that's what the customer wants. Um, this is not my PCB. This is something the customer sent me, and it's available for anybody to use um, on OSH Park. Uh, I think they have some page somewhere where it's just a collaborative thing. You know, you can upload your design there, and anybody can use it. Basically, anybody can order it. And the guy ordered a couple, ordered a couple chips and really really easy to solder it's not super super tight pitch uh, I think it was this one actually got a bridge right there that I could not get rid of and I finally figured out that all those pins were bridged there's like on the PCB itself there's a trace between the pins on all of those I didn't find that out until after I looked at the schematic on uh, Games X or Game SX, whatever it's called. But just the chip in a point one microfarad. Not too difficult, really easy to drag solder if you got the flux and the right tools. Little instructions on the back. Uh, that's the big thing with this mod is there's a couple different chips on the SNES that you'll have to solder to. And it says right there if you have the SNES Mini, you'll have the SAPU, which is this chip right here. And on I think on the other ones it'll be the SDSP, the Model 1s and whatnot. So it's got the pin numbers right there next to each uh, solder point. And it says the second one is for the, the SAPU, which is what I have here. Now, the trick that I found here was to not solder directly to the chip. I really hate doing that anyway, but especially you need to solder to 92, 3, and 4. So there are three tiny pins all right next to each other. Going to be not impossible, but very difficult and very likely to bridge them. And I didn't want to do that. So I took some time and actually traced out the pins out to the board and every single one of them has a via you can solder to. It's most excellent. Okay, so let's see. We got pin 16, which is right here in the middle right here. It goes over to this leg of this three leg chip right there. Okay, so that's pin 16. Super, super easy. I'll get some close ups here again. And I also found power and ground on that same chip right there so that's what those are uh, right here is 52 which is up here comes out to via right there and then 92 3 and 4 are right here where these traces start right after that ground or power plane right there there's three traces right there those are those are going to be the trouble ones and all I did was start uh, checking continuity between those pins and all of these pins, these pins up here, and then I found they actually go to this chip right here in the back. And of course, there's vias right there. And I was like, well, if there's vias there, there's probably vias down here, and I found them right there, right up against the uh, cart connector. Super easy to solder to those vias compared to trying to solder to the I don't know what those are half mil pitch super tight pitch on that. So the plan is to simply have those wires ready and then I'll put this over it like so somehow and then I'll just put a dab of hot glue down and put that on there and then I can solder all the wires to it and it'll be like that. So and then of course the RCA jack will just drill a hole back here and hook up let's see the toss link pin 
and then we'll have two extra resistors uh, like a 91 ohm and something else up here to lower the voltage but most of that is really really simple stuff I'm not really going to show all of that <laughs> I really just wanted to show you that there are places to solder wires to other than right on the chip at least for this mini I think most of the minis are the same so but I can't tell you anything about the model one I just this is the first time I've ever done SPDIF mod on anything and it sounded like a good challenge and I'm actually starting to slow down a little bit for any SRGB mods and I told the guy yeah if you can get it to me right away I'll get it in It'll be something different a different video uh, but I don't know that I'll take this on a lot just because I think the HDMI mod is gonna be hitting here in the next two three months or something like that and I just know we'll be swamped so I don't want to start taking a bunch of orders just yet so anyway I think I'll cut here and we'll cut back and uh, I guess I'll uh, get a close-up of those pins for you and then I'll cut back and see the finished product all right so here's the SAPU chip and it's a pretty good shot of 52 right there just comes right off the pin to a via and then 16 down here goes over to that chip so that's pin 16 right there and of course power and ground and then kind of make out those three traces right there that's where 94 3 and 2 go off and they go under this chip and then this chip back here is where I found continuity to those vias and then I traced them back and I found vias right there and I do believe it was uh, try to get in there here let's see I think pin number five was in fact 94, 93, 92 just like that so those three vias so if you want to start there to check continuity for the pins instead of trying to check it from the actual pins might be a little easier there's real no way to truly mark those Let's see if I can get a little more light here not very easy to get those in focus need a lot more light or something anyway that's how easy it is I'll give you a little look at the uh, semi finished product before I put the heat shield back in here and hide some of it there is the resistor is used to lower the voltage so they can get coax out uh, there's two 180 ohms in parallel right there because it needed 91 to ground so I've got 90 point something and then here's a 330 from the toss link output of the board and like I said and I as soon as I put this put this RF shield on I lost track of which number was which wire here all I had to do was go back over here and find continuity between here and the wire and put it on the right pad power ground 16 and 52 wires not the cleanest install, but you know what? Whatever. Eight wires hanging around, no big deal. All right. So I'm gonna put it back together, and then um, maybe I'll get a receiver in here and test it in this room instead of in the front room. One of my first concerns, now that it's all back together, is does the original audio work still? And it appears to be perfectly fine, so that's good. Now let's move on to the coax digital audio. All right, so I'm all hooked up, but I'm having this problem where the volume is fading like this. I'll do it like three times, and it'll be okay for a little bit. And it's not anything to do with where it's at in the game either. It seems to happen at specific intervals, time intervals, but not coinciding with the intro at all. There 
goes. Two. Three. seem to come back it would be fine. You know, I'd love to say it's my receiver. <laughs> but this is really the only uh, digital coax input device that I have that I can think of. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the only thing I've got that'll do digital coax, so... I don't know, I might uh, search around on some forums or whatever and see what's up. Okay, so after some research, I may have stumbled across what's going on, but I'm still not positive, so if anybody really knows what's happening here, don't be afraid to contact me, leave a comment, whatever. Um, the SNES puts out a less common sampling rate of 32K, 32K kilohertz, or 32 kilohertz. And even worse, it's not exactly 32 kilohertz, it's 32,040 hertz. So it's possible that one of those two um, things is why my receiver, which is like 12 years old or something, It's and it's a piece of crap, KLH, is not working correctly, although I, I'm still not certain of that, but I have read of plenty of other people having that problem, but they weren't having the audio fade in and out. Of course, they weren't using this receiver either, so that, I don't know. Anyway, there is somebody that has another design that resembles it to 96 kilohertz, which is more common and probably wouldn't have as much issues with so I've contacted the owner of this console and asked him what he wanted to do uh, I might try to get a hold of just a board and order the parts or I might order a set of three boards for myself um, it is a shared project on OSH Park I can't remember the name else L train something like that um, it's just an SPDIF SNES there can't be too many of those on OSH Park, but it's the one that has way more chips on it. You know, there's like, I think there's like six chips or something like that. Anyway, I'll uh, wrap this up, post it, let the owner see what's going on, and let him decide what he wants to do. I might go ahead and actually order the uh, 96K, 96 kilohertz uh, mod, just for fun to see if it will work on this, just for my own curiosity, because if I ever do offer this, I don't want it to. I don't want this to happen to somebody, you know. So, anyway, that's it for now, and uh, we'll get back to you later.